Hello everyone, and welcome to this first in our series of videos on the Mindstar Aviation simulation of the Garmin G1000. Let's jump right into it. What we've got on the screen right now is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2004. The same G1000 software runs either in Flight Sim 2004 or in FSX, either one. We don't have different G1000s for each version of Microsoft Flight Sim. The same G1000 runs in both versions of the sim. The first thing you notice in a G1000 cockpit is the two screens, the two computer screens um, on the cockpit panel. In the Mindstar Aviation G1000, you can click on the center of either of these screens to get a larger view of the G1000 screen that you're looking at. So that works for the left-hand screen and the right-hand screen. A little bit of terminology I think would help at this point. The left hand screen, the one over here, is called the primary flight display or the PFD. And the second screen on the right over here is called the multifunction display or MFD. If you look at them more carefully you'll notice that the knobs and buttons along the outer edges or the bezel of the G1000 display unit is the same on each of the units. The knobs and buttons are the same. So you have a nav button here, there's a nav knob here, there's a heading knob here, a heading knob here. They're identical. So although you see a lot of knobs and buttons, there's really a lot of duplication as well. So once you know one display unit, you know both display units as far as the buttons are concerned. Here in the middle, you also see what's called the audio panel and this is where you select which transmitter you want to use, which radio you want to listen to, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's an important extra button on the audio panel, this big red button at the bottom, uh, called the reversionary mode button or the display backup button. We'll get into that in more detail. For right now, um, what I'd like to do is just fire up the airplane so you can see what it looks like with the G1000 powered up. So before we can power up anything with the engine, we would have to turn on the G1000 because that's where all our engine instrumentation is. So you'll see it's going through its startup sequence. This is the computer inside the G1000 going through internal self-tests. You'll also hear the dinging going on because there's some enunciations going on over here with low oil pressure and alternator, low volts. That's all because we don't have the engine running. So I'll just mute that for now. Um, I want to focus my, our attention though for just one second on the right hand screen. Notice that it's still stuck on the splash screen or the startup messages screen. This screen is here to give you an idea of what versions of the software you're running in the real airplane. Uh, but you need to clear this screen before you can see the rest of the instrumentation in the G1000. You clear the screen either by pushing the rightmost soft key, which is this one right here, or you can press the enter key. In this case, we'll just press the enter key. We'll click it right there and put that screen back in its place, and you see the G1000's GPS unit showing. So let's get the engine started. We'll put a little bit of mixture in and turn the key. And the engine is now running and we've got the alternator on as well, so we should not hear any more dinging. Now, now that we've got this running, we can turn on our Avionics Master as well. You'll notice that the second line of radio frequencies here, which is COM2 and NAV2, is not active when the Avionics switch is off. But the first row is active and available when you have the Avionics Master switch turned off. Let's turn it back on and now you have a fully functioning G1000 system. You'll also notice that down here at the bottom we're using the Mindstar Aviation Bendix King Cap 140 simulation. This is a product that doesn't come with the G1000 but is also available for sale and it's a little bit better simulation than the ones that come with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So just like the real airplane it asks you to set your barometric pressure and it will default into its default mode. Um, important point, just like when you can click on the middle of the G1000 screens to bring up larger versions, for the Bendix King you can click right on its logo area right here to pop a larger version of it back and forth, just like that. So what I want to do now is focus a little bit on the specifics of the knobs and buttons of the G1000. 
you remember I said the knobs and buttons are the same on both units. So, for example, we have a nav button here and a nav button here. But it's more important during real airplane use and in the simulation to pay attention to the fact that all the knobs and buttons you need are right here in the middle. Your hand never needs to move very far from this center section right here. That's because these knobs and buttons will change the corresponding settings on both the PFD and the MFD simultaneously. So you don't necessarily have to reach all the way to the opposite side of the cockpit if the knob you want is right here in the middle. Well, that's it for our initial peek at the Meister Aviation G1000 simulation. The next installment in our video series will start to show you more about how to read and interpret all the information on the G1000. Thanks for watching.